Hey guys, good news. The parts showed up for the Admiral Radio today. But before I get into that, I got some other stuff I want to show you. The weather was pretty nice the last couple days, relatively speaking. So I did some premature spring cleaning on the back porch and I pulled out even more tubes. I think I've shown you these pyramids of tubes that I've been slowly boxing up before. Um, well, this time I pulled out my specialty rare oh, industrial war surplus cathode ray tube collection and I thought I'd give you a quick run through while I've got them all out. These are Nixie tubes. I showed these in my early display technology video. This is an early infrared uh, tube, like for night vision for our, um, sniper scopes from 1952. This end would go, would focus on the, uh, well, on the nighttime, you know, view, and then this had a fluorescent screen on the back that would translate the infrared to visible light. These are early radar tubes, including this, which is a magnetron. This would actually produce the strong radar pulses. Uh, now this is just the actual electron gun part of it. In, in practice, it would be two very powerful magnets or one big horseshoe magnet wrapped around this whole thing. Uh, next up, got some transmitter tubes. Uh, you may have seen these guys before. I think they still make these, like Amperex. You know, ham, ham guys still use those. And they go to about a 250, 500, maybe 1,000 watts, I think. Uh, more transmitter tubes. Oh, and I wanted to show you this one because, you know, when I was a kid I used to break tubes and maybe some of you guys did too, but it's not the safest thing in the world. Like this one is filled with quite a bit of mercury. And some of these others, um, some of these radar tubes even I think have some trace amounts of radioactive gas, so uh, not, not the kind of stuff you really want to be fooling around with. Uh, this is what they call an acorn tube. Very small tube you commonly find actually in signal generators like a say heath kit. These would um, produce the RF signals up into uh, I think the hundreds of megahertz if not higher range. These are photo detector tubes. They would actually use these in old movie cameras to pick off the sound signal from the edge of the uh, film as it went through the projector. And some of you guys may have seen this before. This is uh, a photo tube for what they call a flying spot scanner. This is what's used in the B&K 1077 uh, TV analyst to produce a test pattern. Uh, now my cathode ray tubes. Starting out in the front. Well, actually, starting out in the front, there should be a 1 inch RCA 913 tube, but I cannot find it, so we'll start out with the 2 inch tubes. 2 AP1, it's one of the, uh, these are commonly used in a lot of ham gear. You can see this one even has a line burned in it. They'd use these, um, I think, on the transmitters to monitor the uh, output levels or the spectrum purity. This one's a little guy from England, probably from a scope. These three XP1s are also from hand equipment or test equipment, like maybe a spectrum analyzer, where you'd uh, have a oh a rectangle, sorry, a horizontal sweep with little spikes of lines up at the different uh, RF spectrums or uh, different frequencies rather. Now, these guys are kind of oddball. I think these are radar tubes but they're awfully small. But the reason I say that is because of the phosphor type. Like this is P7 which is a really long persistent phosphor you've probably seen in the movies, you know, the old movies where they have the hand sweeping around the little blips that slowly fade. Well, I can illustrate that. If I obscure part of this and shine a bright light like for my camera on this and then take my finger away. Oh, let me turn the lights off. It's actually phosphorescent. That's that really long persistent phosphor. And let me turn the light off on the camera. All right, I think you can see there the shadow of my finger on there. Now the other tube next to it, that's actually an orange phosphor. There were a few radar tubes that had an orange phosphor. Um, What's, what's also odd about these is they have an alter, which is this high voltage connection here. Normally tubes this small, you didn't, you didn't need it, but uh, I, don't have, I don't have the specs on these, but they must have needed some extra high voltage on these. I did fire this up once and it is pretty cool, it is actually bright orange. Uh, another, a couple more interesting tubes are these guys. 
these were also used in radars, but a different kind of radar. Uh, I believe they, they have a center connector here on the front, and the numbers going around. I believe this would be synchronized with a motor that was rotating, and maybe there was a cam on it. And when it hit zero, it would shoot out the, the radar pulse. Then the trace would continue to rotate around, and when it got a reflection, like say it got a pulse back at two, there'd be a little deflection here. So you'd know that you know, there was something coming that was 200 feet away. This one actually even says hundreds of feet. And better yet, this one I can actually turn on and show you. I actually built this myself about 20 plus years ago, because I wanted to see one of these in action. So I got it a pe little piece of uh, gear and uh, built my own little display here. Well, that's warming up, I'll move on. Scope tube, another scope tube. This is an early Japanese tube. Kind of interesting on this one because it has the connections for the deflection plates coming out of around the tube instead of around the base. Good old Tektronix scope tube. It has a cool spiral winding around it. I think that was to uh, help get that a really bright piercing blue white trace. Uh, another scope tube. There's another P7 tube, another radar tube. And this one is P1. The P is for phosphor. And there's P1 through 22 and probably beyond that. P1 is the, uh, the green phosphor you've probably seen on uh, scopes before. P7 was the radar. P4 is a, what black and white TVs use. P11, like this Tektronix, was a later innovation that makes that really bright blue-white trace that more modern scopes use. Another scope tube where they actually had the reticule built right into the glass. This is a projection tube. We're in really high voltage. Uh, but it has a lens in the front, but I'm really not sure what it's from. It's from Westinghouse. It's got a weird number on it. It's P11 phosphor, which is the same as... Oops. This is Tektronix tube, so I don't think it was for a TV, a projection TV. Maybe it was even used in like a planetarium, or something like that. I'm not sure, I, I could never find any info about it. Well, these guys are kind of interesting too. More P7 military tubes uh, used for radar, but these have two guns inside. You can see all the extra connections going around the outside. So what these could do, these could have two independent signals being displayed on the front of the screen. So maybe one was doing the sweep around and uh, the other was doing the blips. Or one was maybe putting on little alphanumeric indicators on the blips about what plane uh, ID they picked up. 